Hey there, this is Prakash, the head of product of Xano. Uh, we got a question in office hours today that uh, was uh, asking us how you get the product information from your e-commerce uh, site here within Webflow, specifically on a specific item if you've added variants or uh, SKUs to it, like I've done here with this dummy information, how do you access this directly? Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do this uh, all within Xano. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're gonna be uh, need to get your API key and you can do that by clicking on project settings. Um, I'll go ahead and leave this and you click on integrations and uh, then you can go here and I'll just generate a new API key so we can do this from scratch. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll go back into the designer. So then here in Xano, I've started a new workspace. You might already have one that exists, but we can just go ahead and, um, and get started with this. Uh, what I always like to do anytime I have like uh, API keys that are associated with other services, I like to put them in environment variables so I can access them anywhere. So you'll see what I mean here. I'm going to click on manage and I'm going to just type Webflow API key and I'll paste in that value just so I have it there. Okay, so now that that's saved, I'm going to go into my API. I created this group already, but I, there's no API endpoints to do this. So I'm just going to create a new endpoint. I'm going to start from scratch and I'm going to just call this like get product info. Okay. So I'm going to click save. So now I have a brand new endpoint. Okay. So the way that I know how to get the product information out of my products over here is by actually going to a uh, Webflow's uh, developer page and looking at their API reference. So if I click on e-commerce over here, I can see these are all the different commands to get uh, my information from Webflow. And so what I actually want to do is I wanna get either all product information or a single product, right? And the associated SKUs, we get single product and SKUs. And you can see that I have uh, the command over here. But as I look at this, I can see that it requires a site ID and it requires the product that I'm looking for. So the product that I'm looking for actually, uh, let's say, because I, uh, I added the SKUs to this one, if I click on the product itself, I can look at the item ID. So that's what I wanna go ahead and get. But however, um, they don't actually make it easy in Webflow to get your site ID. And I unfortunately know this from experience. If any of you know how to get this without doing what I'm about to do, please leave it in the comments below. So in order to get the site ID, I can go to their little site section and they actually have the command to list sites uh, based on your account. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a function and this is kind of a throwaway function just to get my site ID, but I'm going to import the curl command and the curl command is what I'm getting from here. And just so you know, curl stands for command line URL. Almost every single API has an example that you can copy and paste into Xano. So I'm gonna paste this over here I'm gonna click uh, import, it's gonna have everything for me. But on this bearer uh, token side, it has a dummy token, which I wanna fill out with my Webflow API key. So I'm gonna add that space between bearer, and then I'm gonna hit percent %s. And percent %s allows me to replace this with anything that I want. So how do I do that? I'm gonna click add filter. I'm gonna choose a filter called sprint F. And all you need to know is that's the thing that replaces that percent %s. And then uh, in terms of what I wanna replace it with, I just hit this plus button and I could add random text if I wanted, or I could manually type in the API key. But if you'll remember, I stored it in my environment variable. So I'm just gonna drop this down, click environment and click on Webflow API key. Okay, so I'm gonna click update and save. So if I run this, I can see that it's going to return as API one. That's what I'm returning. I should be able to get my site ID from here. So uh, headers is 200, that means it was successful. And here I can see my site ID for a uh, Xeno API example. So I'm gonna just copy that to my clipboard. Okay, so now that that is completely copied, I can actually get rid of this entirely. I don't even need it anymore. So what's the next thing that I need? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna need the, uh, if I go to e-commerce and if I want to get, what am I doing? I'm getting all, or I'm getting a, a single product. I'm gonna need that product ID. So I'm gonna open just a separate window over here that uh, you don't necessarily need to see, but um, wait, what am I doing? There we go. Uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that site ID in one, or actually maybe, yeah, I'll just, I'll show you what I'm looking at. 
So this is my site ID over here, and then I'll do one for my, my product ID. So I want this specific product. So if I scroll down, this is the item ID that I want. So I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna go back to my text uh, site, and I have that. So I have those two things there. Okay, so now that I have those two things here, I can go back to Webflow. I can copy this curl command. I can go back to Xano, and here in the function stack, I'm going to hit plus external API request. I'm going to import that curl command. I'm going to click import. Remember, this percent %s replaces what I have for my authentication token. I'm going to use sprint f. And then I'm going to hit this and hit my environment and Webflow API key. So this part is done. The next part is replacing the site ID. You can see here in this URL, and if I, you can see it more clearly here, this, um, it hits their API, then it requires their site ID, and then it requires the actual product. So let's do one at a time. So on the site, we're going to use, you guessed it, the percent %s again, and I'm going to hit add filter, choose filter, remember that fancy sprint F, and I'm going to replace it with, uh, let's open up that text document, the site ID that I got, right? So I'm going to copy that, and I'm just going to paste it into here. So now that I've added that, uh, I'll go ahead and click update. Now the next thing I can do sprint F again on the product side. So remember this is products slash products. I'm gonna hit percent S again. That's a cool thing. I could just keep doing it, right? And so here I can actually open the sprint F and the second argument I can just hit plus. And this just tells me on the next sprint F use this other piece of text, which in this case is going to be that product ID. Okay, so now I've done those two things here and I'm gonna click save. So if I've done everything right, if I run this, it should return me um, that specific product that I was uh, looking at here in uh, Webflow, which is an awesome concrete pizza. Uh, don't ask me, this is what Webflow auto completed with all of this information. So let's go ahead and try to do that here. So I'm gonna run and debug this. I'm gonna click run, it says it's okay. And then here, what I'm getting is all of the different information from it. So uh, where does it have? Does it say concrete pizza? It has all the, ah, oh, there it is. It has all the variants first for some reason. And uh, if I wanted to get, for example, one, two, um, three, four, five, that was one of the SKUs that I put in here. Uh, there I can see one, two, three, four, five. And that one is five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I could search for that too, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there it is over there. Now, what if I wanted to just return the SKUs? I don't want all of this other information. That was one of the other questions. Easiest way to do that is I'm gonna copy these results and it just copies everything to the clipboard. And then I'm gonna use variable. Variables are magic because they're used to store information and you can then manipulate it any way that you want. So I'm gonna close this. I'm going to hit another plus button. I'm gonna go data manipulation and I'm gonna create a variable. And I'm gonna call this uh, variable refined uh, response, okay? And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little dropdown and I'm going to say, okay, I'm gonna get the subpath of this API one. So just to take a step back, I really want you to understand what's happening here. Um, this is hitting the API from Webflow and it's returning as the variable API one. So I wanna dig into this API one variable and instead of getting everything, I just want the SKU information. So I'm gonna create this variable, create variable. I'm gonna call this, uh, I'll just call this skew. I can call this anything that I want. I'm creating a new variable. On the value, I'm gonna hit this drop down, and I'm gonna do the subpath of this API one. Subpath just means go inside this. So it's gonna say, well, paste me the response from uh, what you're getting from API one, which remember we copied from the initial response. I'm gonna click next, and then it allows me to traverse inside of the response that I'm getting. So I don't need the request. I want what's in the response. I want what's in the results. I want what's in items. Uh, zero is the first item that comes back. Uh, typically in coding, uh, zero is one. So I'm gonna click in zero. I'm gonna go into the SKUs. I'm gonna go into the SKU of the, let's just call it the first uh, item. And I'll just do SKU. And instead of, uh, this is a little bit of a pro tip. This right here would re, uh, return back the very first SKU. If I wanted all SKUs, I would just delete that zero. So I'm gonna click save. And if I've done this right and I run it, and instead, right now, remember, it's still returning API one, I'm gonna have it return um, SKU instead. So I'm going to drop, click this. I'm gonna click SKU. I'm gonna click save. 
So now it's returning this instead of that, okay? So if I've done this right, I should just get all the SKUs associated with this product, and I do. You can see it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, five, okay? So from this point, because I have this variable, I could add a for each loop next to go through this variable, and for each one of these, I could either save it to my database, I could send it back out to another uh, third-party service, I could really do whatever I want. So hopefully this was helpful in explaining to you how you connect and get your Webflow e-commerce collections, specifically getting the SKUs out, and then transforming that massive uh, bit of data that comes from your product information and just limiting it down to the SKUs. Okay, thank you.